I'm going to do my best to wake you up from the Indian food coma. Um, my name is Parul Gadral. If you haven't heard the name before, um, I can assure you it's as common as the name John on the other side of the world. And if you're not familiar with the other side of the world, you should be, because they're taking your jobs. Just kidding. Um, is this thing working here? Okay. Um, but speaking on the other side of the world, I want to start off by sharing a story. A story about how my family came to the U.S. Um, and a story that inspired me uh, to change my life, um, to also turn me into the chief snowman of Snowball, my company. Obviously, you could see that I'm quite young. So what you can see here is my uncle and my family. He came from a family of villagers and a family of farm farmers. For generations, they were just farmers. And my uncle Sarvan, he was a child prodigy of the village. For years and years, the village had great expectations upon him to change the life of others. And with a hope and dream, he applied to UC Berkeley. <laughs> and at the age of 22, he actually had his dream uh, come to fruition. But as a villager, a family of farmers for generations of 13, how could he possibly afford to go to UC Berkeley? And so a thousand villagers got together and they shared all of their savings to send him to UC Berkeley. Fast forward to the future. This is my uncle five years ago when he retired from what is now the most prestigious water engineering company uh, in the West Coast. He started there as an intern at UC Berkeley, saved up all his money, sent it back to take care of everybody. And so I had a very peculiar conversation with my uncle, which stuck out and quite frankly changed my life. I realized my uncle was extremely frugal. And I asked him, uncle, you've done very well. You were CEO, you were partner, chief engineering officer of this company. You have the disposable income to be able to afford $200 on a nice dinner every once in a while. And he said, beta, which means son, why would I spend $200 on dinner when I could feed a village. And so I realized my uncle was quite a noble man. And the secret to his life was giving. And that was quite fulfilling for him. And beyond that, it also <laughs> left clue of how extremely risk adverse he was with his investments. So who here has heard of CD accounts, right? 2% uh, revenue, or pardon me, 2% interest over 10 year lockup. Anyone ever hear about that? Ever invest in those? Um, he also would invest in government bonds, and when he was feeling particularly ambitious, he would invest in indexes, because the stock market is going to die. Um, so one day my uncle called me in November, and he asked me a question that I never thought an extremely risk-adverse investor would ever ask. Beta, how do you invest in this Bitcoin? <laughs> so I was like, uncle, that's actually a good question because there's no easy way to invest in a portfolio of cryptocurrencies, let alone Bitcoin, unless you're using the traditional exchanges. And so, fast forward, this is my uncle back in his village with his brothers. All of these guys come from the same school of thought of being extremely risk adverse with their investments. But for irrational reasons, they like to invest into cryptocurrencies. So here's why. So in January 1st, 2016, the total market cap was around $7 billion. From January 1st, 2016 to 2017, it turned to $18 billion. And just January 1st this year, it was $613 billion. So if you had invested in ETH or ETH Ethereum on January 1st of 2017, and by December 31st of 2017, you would have made eight thousand percent gains and so what are the thought leaders in this space saying um, well some of you guys may know about the hero party that Tim Draper uh, had just recently to celebrate his newest prediction that cryptocurrencies but specifically Bitcoin will hit a price of two hundred fifty thousand dollars by 2020 uh, pardon me by 2022 and we've got John McAfee who was saying it'd be a a million dollars by 2010, uh, pardon me, 2020. And so uh, in the futures market, there was a bet made 
uh, of a million dollars that Bitcoin would hit $25,000 by the end of this year. And so we've got a lot of thought leaders which are extremely bullish. So according to Coinist, they took an index of all of the ICOs on their platform to date. And what you can see here is the top 100 performing ICOs had over 34,000% gains. But the average ICO had, if you guys can't see that number, 11,543% gains. If you had invested a dollar in every single ICO, the scammers, the fraudsters, and the big winners, you would have came up 11,543%. So if you look at what the ICO investments were last year, there was approximately 5.6 billion in ICO investments in 2017. But at the turn of the year, we went through a correction. The bears came out to play. And the average investor lost 65 to 75% of their portfolio. However, still in Q1, in the bear market, there was 118% growth from the total of 2017 to just the first quarter of 2018 of $6.3 billion. So bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered, okay? There's a great opportunity to invest. It is said that we're going through one of the biggest financial revolutions that we may uh, experience in our lifetimes. The transfer from fiat currencies to digital currencies. How do you play? How do you play safely? Well, so many folks are lost a lot of uh, money average 70% with this correction, but this wasn't the first correction. Corrections aren't a new thing when it comes to cryptocurrencies. As you can see, uh, in 2013, there was a 87% correction. Uh, matter of fact, there was an 83% correction. Massive corrections in the cryptocurrency space is something that's normal. And what we've seen is the trend is, whenever there's a massive fall, there tends to be a gain. But I want to warn you, I'm not giving any investment advice. The past does not dictate the future. So what is our thesis? 90% of crypto coins, we heard this from Jeremy earlier today and many other thought leaders, will fail, very likely. Uh, so how can you protect yourself? How can you be part of this revolution and how can you be safe? <laughs> and, and this is because the ICOs, right? The ICOs have a dream, they have a promise, but the result is, you know, their work doesn't come to fruition. Uh, it's a dream that isn't executed on perfectly. And so what we find the biggest challenge in investing in crypto is learning the technology. You have to download uh, multiple wallets, sign up for multiple exchanges, move money across platforms. Um, it's an extremely meticulous, time-consuming uh, activity. Have an investment thesis. What happens when you're asleep? The market isn't asleep. And so how do you win? So I'm going to conclude this by saying that my company, Snowball, our goal is to democratize this opportunity to invest in crypto so everyone has the opportunity to win. And we do this via partnering with crowdsourced brilliance, which is crypto hedge funds. Um, the challenge with crypto hedge funds is hedge funds in general, they lose very often. And so we've created economics to allow the bad actors to be weeded out and the best to rise to the top. And so I'd love to speak to you guys more about this. If you're interested, I'll be on the side. But thank you for your time.